why official coronavirus statistics are misleading and dangerous. Why is the death rate so low in Germany? How come the UK has comparatively fewer cases than elsewhere? And what's going on in Russia? An online map of global coronavirus cases, compiled by Johns Hopkins University, JHU, is, according to the university, being viewed more than 1 billion times every day by people who want to see the figures for themselves. Questions once reserved for epidemiologists are now being discussed over dinner tables and around virtual water coolers across the world. But what if the numbers aren't painting the full picture? For people who are comparing the data and attempting to divine how different countries' epidemics stack up against each other, experts have a warning. Nations have different reporting standards, different approaches to testing, and different approaches to tracing cases, all of which make such comparisons dangerously misleading. Sheila Bird, a renowned British biostatistician and professor at Cambridge University, says testing and reporting have been inconsistent even within individual countries, let alone internationally. Rules on who gets tested and where and when can evolve, and these changes in time lapses are not necessarily captured in the data published by different governments. Bird is one of a number of high-profile scientists who have been calling on the UK government to run more coronavirus tests and provide more nuanced data. The UK government says the health system doesn't currently have the capacity to test everyone who has COVID-19 symptoms. Only patients sick enough to require hospital treatment get tested, according to the government. The country had more than 9962 cases and 467 deaths as of Thursday, according to JHU. Meanwhile in Germany, anyone who shows flu-like symptoms and has in the past 14 days come into contact with a confirmed case or travel to a high-risk region gets tested, according to official guidelines published by the health ministry. According to JHU, more than 41,519 people there have tested positive as of Thursday, with just 239 deaths. And in South Korea, there is free and easy access to testing for anyone whom a doctor deems needs it, and authorities have been tracing the contacts of infected patients. As of Wednesday, the country had 9241 cases and 131 deaths, according to JHU. The relatively low number of tests done in the UK helps explain why the case numbers appear so much lower in the JHU map compared to other European countries. It doesn't mean fewer people are sick, necessarily, just that fewer people are being tested. The danger is relying on the figures and assuming that they give us an accurate count of the total number of people who have been infected, said Mike Tilsley, an associate professor at Warwick University. The lack of testing could also make the situation look worse than it is. Based on the number of confirmed cases and reported deaths, the UK appears to have a relatively high COVID-19 mortality rate. But that's not necessarily the case, because in the UK, only those who are very ill get tested. People with mild symptoms, who are very likely to recover, are being told to stay home without being tested, meaning they're not being captured by the data. Internationally, the comparisons rely on a piecemeal of different sources. The JHU map, which has become the go-to resource for many media organizations and experts, pulls in data from the World Health Organization, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control and China's National Health Commission, in addition to local media reports, health departments, and the online community for healthcare professionals known as DXY. Bird said comparing such numbers could be dangerous. Lacking assured like with like comparators in other countries, we risk making heroic, and perhaps heroically wrong, inferences country to country, she told CNN in an email. Tilsley, who specializes in developing mathematical models to simulate the spread of diseases, said people need to be mindful of the bigger picture. The fear is that people may look at their own risk, consider it slow, and then not take the measures that are being advised, he said. His advice. Even though the likelihood of any one individual in the UK being infected is very low at the moment, everyone should behave as if they were. Rather than focus too much on the actual numbers, scientists spend a lot of time looking at the epidemic curve, the shape of the graph that captures the total number of new cases in each country day by day. If different nations have different standards and conditions, they at least generate a consistent curve if those standards and conditions are stable across time, said Lisa Gittleman, a Nile professor and the editor of a book called Raw Data is an Oxymoron. So, if Italy keeps testing people at similar rate and its daily rate of increase in new cases starts going down, the curve starts flattening, that's good news. But the testing rate needs to stay the same. 
If the UK suddenly starts testing many more people and sees a big jump in new cases, it doesn't necessarily mean the epidemic is spreading faster. Similarly, if a country runs out of tests, it may suddenly report a misleading drop in new cases. Accurate information is important because to defeat the virus, people need to be willing to comply with strict restrictions. Scientists say the only way to defeat the virus is through social distancing, which requires citizens to drastically alter their way of life. Martin Hibbard, a professor of emerging infectious disease at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, said the UK government's figures may make some people think there are not many cases. He said that's why the associated messaging is important. Gaining compliance will then depend on convincing people that their actions impact the numbers going forward, he said. When the containment restrictions are increased, we should expect to see an impact on the numbers, the forward predictions should change, and people can be convinced that their actions matter, he added. The reproduction number, showing the average number of people each infected person passes the virus on to, is a key metric when looking at the success of the restrictive measures. Early data indicates that social distancing measures really help to curb the disease from spreading, according to a study published in The Lancet on Wednesday. The Czech Ministry of Health released preliminary data on Tuesday that suggest that while the initial reproduction number in the Czech Republic stood at 2.64, this went down to 1.84 after March 12, when movement restrictions came into place. To convince people to obey the rules, politicians need to make a convincing case that the situation is serious enough to merit such sacrifices. Unfortunately there is no one metric that enables us to compare situations in different countries, Tilsley said. Looking at the number of deaths gives some indication about the severity of the situation in each country, but international comparisons are again complicated. No two countries are alike when it comes to access to healthcare and medical resources, underlying health conditions, and even the age structure of the population. The number of deaths may be higher in different countries if there are not the same level of resources for treatment as in other countries, so it doesn't necessarily mean that the disease is spreading in a different way or the controls are less effective, Tilsley added. Having more complete data on the number of all recoveries would be helpful. Scientists are hoping that a widespread testing for antibodies, which should become available at least in some countries in the coming days, would reveal who has had the illness in the past and help paint a more accurate picture of the epidemic. But even when the numbers are accurate, they may be hard to comprehend. Data is useful, but I think the most important thing is looking at the experience in other countries, said Nick Chater, a professor of behavioral science at Warwick Business School. In the UK, the government's projections are that in a good scenario, 20,000 people die, but that's very hard to make sense of until you realize what's happening in Italy now, he said. There are 6,000 deaths, and if you look at what it's like to be dealing with the healthcare disaster there, it's clearly absolutely terrible, and anything that's much worse than that is clearly really really terrible. It's these comparisons that bring the data alive. Members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard prepare to take part in disinfecting the city of Tehran on Wednesday, March 25. Lydia Hasebrook attends a ballet class from her home in New York on March 25. People visit the Beijing Zoo on March 25, after it reopened its outdoor exhibits to the public. The Olympic flame is displayed in Iwaki, Japan, on March 25, a day after the 2020 Tokyo Games were postponed. People practice social distancing as they wait for takeout food at a shopping mall in Bangkok, Thailand, on Tuesday, March 24. Authorities are seen in Madrid, where an ice ring has been converted into a makeshift morgue to cope with the coronavirus fallout. A tourist wears a face mask while visiting the Beidling section of the Great Wall of China on March 24. The section reopened to visitors after being closed for two months. People arrive at the South Municipal Cemetery in Madrid to attend the burial of a man who died from the coronavirus. A normally busy street is mostly empty in Pattaya, Thailand, on Monday, March 23. Passengers arrive at Hong Kong International Airport on March 23. Giuseppe Cribari holds Sunday Mass in front of photographs sent in by his congregation members in Yusano, Italy, on March 22. Many religious services are being streamed online so that people can worship while still maintaining their distance from others. People clap from balconies to show their appreciation for healthcare workers in Mumbai, India. A woman attends a Sunday service at the Nairobi Baptist Church in Nairobi, Kenya, on March 22. The service was streamed live on the internet. 
A Syrian Red Crescent member spray is disinfectant along an alley of the historic Hamadiyya market in Damascus, Syria. People are seen on California's Huntington Beach on Saturday, March 21. Crowds descended on California beaches, hiking trails and parks over the weekend in open defiance of a state order to shelter in place and avoid close contact with others. A funeral service is held without family members in Bergamo, Italy, on March 21. A member of the Syrian Violet Relief Group disinfects tents at a camp for displaced people in Kafrajala, Syria, on March 21. A doctor examines Juan Vasquez inside a testing tent at St. Barnabas Hospital in New York on Friday, March 20. A mass in Rio de Janeiro honors Coronavirus victims around the world on March 18. Brazil's Christ the Redeemer statue was lit up with flags and messages of hope and solidarity with countries affected by the pandemic. Medical staff wearing protective suits ride down an escalator at Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport on March 18. Hasidic Jewish men take part in a social distancing minion in New York on March 17. A patient in a biocontainment unit is carried on a stretcher in Rome on March 17. A pedestrian walks a dog through a quiet street in New York on March 17. People gather to collect free face masks in New Delhi on March 17. Dermot Hickey, left, and Philip Vega ask a pedestrian in New York to take their picture on a thinly trafficked Fifth Avenue on March 17. Many streets across the world are much more bare as people distance themselves from others. In the United States, the White House advised people not to gather in groups of more than 10. Students at the Atarkai Islamic School wear face masks during a ceremony in Thailand's southern province of Narathawit on March 17. People wait outside a Woolworth store in Sunbury, Australia on March 17. Australian supermarket chains announced special shopping hours for the elderly and people with disabilities so that they can shop in less crowded aisles. A member of Spain's military emergencies unit carries out a general disinfection at the Malaga airport on March 16. Displaced families near Aten, Syria, attend a workshop aimed at spreading awareness about the coronavirus. French President Emmanuel Macron is seen on a screen in Paris as he announces new coronavirus containment measures on March 16. France has been put on lockdown, and all non-essential outings are outlawed and can draw a fine of up to €135, Euros, $148. Macron also promised to support French businesses by guaranteeing €300 billion Euro worth of loans and suspending rent and utility bills owed by small companies. A police officer checks the temperatures of bus passengers at a checkpoint in Manila, Philippines, on March 16. Flowers are stored prior to their destruction at a flower auction in Alzamir, Netherlands, on March 16. Lower demand due to the coronavirus outbreak is threatening the Dutch horticultural sector, forcing the destruction of products. Body temperatures are scanned as people enter the Buddhist temple Wat Pho in Bangkok, Thailand, on March 13. Two nuns greet neighbors from their balcony in Turin, Italy, on Sunday, March 15. Pope Francis, inside the Church of San Marcello in Rome city center, prays at a famous crucifix that believers claim helped to save Romans from the plague in 1522. Passengers wait for their flights at Marrakesh Airport in Morocco on March 15. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence takes a question during a White House briefing about the coronavirus on March 15. A Sea World employee spray is disinfectant in Jakarta, Indonesia, on Saturday, March 14. People wait in line to go through customs at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport on March 14. Travelers returning from Europe say they were being made to wait for hours at U.S. airports, often in close quarters, as personnel screened them for the coronavirus. Hundreds of people lined up to enter a Costco in Nevada, California, on March 14. Many people have been stocking up on food, toilet paper and other items. As a response to panic buying, retailers in the United States and Canada have started limiting the number of toilet paper that customers can buy in one trip. A member of the White House Physician's Office takes a media member's temperature in the White House briefing room on March 14. It was ahead of a news conference with President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. A nurse in Cremona, Italy, takes a moment in this heartbreaking photo posted to Instagram by photographer Paolo Miranda. Italy's healthcare system has been severely tested by the coronavirus pandemic. 
Reporters in Arlington, Virginia, sit approximately four feet apart during a briefing by Marine Corps Gen. Kenneth F. McKenzie on March 13. People walk past a closed Broadway theater on March 13 after New York canceled all gatherings over 500 people. A Costco customer stands by two shopping carts in Richmond, California, on March 13. A teacher works in an empty classroom at the Pompou Fabre University in Barcelona, Spain. A woman looks at an empty bread aisle in Antwerp, Belgium, on March 13. Employees of the Greek parliament wear plastic gloves ahead of the swearing-in ceremony for Greek President Katerina Sekulerpaulou. A motorcyclist drives through disinfectant sprayed in Jammu, India, on March 13. Workers prepare to construct an additional building on a hospital on the outskirts of Moscow. Paul Boyer, head equipment manager of the NHL's Detroit Red Wings, wheels out equipment bags in Washington on March 12. The NHL is among the sports leagues that have suspended their seasons. Students leave Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish, Washington, on March 12. Beginning the following day, schools in the Snohomish School District plan to be closed through April 24. An Uber Eats delivery biker stands at a deserted Piazza di Spagna in Rome. People at a railway station in Seoul, South Korea, watch a live broadcast of U.S. President Donald Trump on March 12. Trump announced that, in an effort to slow the spread of the coronavirus, he would sharply restrict travel from more than two dozen European countries. Workers in protective suits disinfect Istanbul's Dolabas Palace on March 11. A person wearing a face mask walks outside of a shopping mall in Beijing on March 11. Police officers restrained a relative of an inmate outside the Santana jail in Medina, Italy, on March 9. Riots broke out in several Italian jails after visits were suspended to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Medical staff in Wuhan, China, celebrate after all coronavirus patients were discharged from a temporary hospital on March 9. Traders work on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on March 9. Stocks plummeted as coronavirus worries and an oil price race to the bottom weight on global financial markets. Rescuers search for victims at the site of a collapsed hotel in Quanzhou, China, on March 8. The hotel was being used as a coronavirus quarantine center. The Grand Princess cruise ship, carrying at least 21 people who tested positive for coronavirus, is seen off the coast of San Francisco on March 8. The ship was being held at sea. Sumo wrestlers attend a tournament in Osaka, Japan, that was being held behind closed doors because of the coronavirus outbreak. A couple rides a bicycle at a park in Seoul, South Korea, on March 7. A volunteer from Blue Sky Rescue uses fumigation equipment to disinfect a residential compound in Beijing on March 5. Airmen from the California National Guard drop coronavirus testing kits down to the Grand Princess cruise ship off the coast of California on March 5. Municipal workers are seen at the Kaaba, inside Mecca's Grand Mosque. Saudi Arabia emptied Islam's holiest site for sterilization over coronavirus fears, an unprecedented move after the kingdom suspended the year-round Umrah pilgrimage. Passengers react as a worker wearing a protective suit disinfects the departure area of a railway station in Hefei, China, on March 4. Teachers at the Nagoya International School in Japan conduct an online class for students staying at home as a precaution against the spread of coronavirus. Soldiers spray disinfectant throughout a shopping street in Seoul. A Muslim worshipper attends a mass prayer against coronavirus in Dakar, Senegal, on March 4. It was after cases were confirmed in the country. People wear face masks in New York's Times Square on March 3. New York reported its first case of coronavirus two days earlier. A security guard stands on the Shibaya Sky Observation Deck in Tokyo on March 3. U.S. President Donald Trump, flanked by Vice President Mike Pence, left, and Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar speaks during a meeting with pharmaceutical executives and the White House Coronavirus Task Force on March 2. Throughout the meeting, Trump was hyper-focused on pressing industry leaders in the room for a timeline for a coronavirus vaccine and treatment. But experts at the table, from the administration and the pharmaceutical industry, repeatedly emphasized that a vaccine can't be rushed to market before it's been declared safe for the public. Medical staff stand outside a hospital in Daegu, South Korea, on March 1. 
healthcare workers transfer a patient to the Life Care Center in Kirkland, Washington, on March 1. The long-term care facility is linked to confirmed coronavirus cases. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson visits a London laboratory of the Public Health England National Infection Service. Tomoyuki Sugano, a professional baseball player on the Yomiuri Giants, throws a pitch in an empty Tokyo Dome during a preseason game on February 29. Fans have been barred from preseason games to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Commuters wearing masks make their way to work during morning rush hour at the Shinagawa train station in Tokyo on February 28. Medical staff transport a coronavirus patient within the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan on February 28. Inter Milan plays Ludogorets in an empty soccer stadium in Milan, Italy, on February 27. The match was ordered to be played behind closed doors as Italian authorities continue to grapple with the coronavirus outbreak. A bank clerk disinfects banknotes in China's Zhejiang province on February 26. A child wearing a protective face mask rides on a scooter in an empty area in Beijing. A Catholic devotee wears a face mask as he is sprinkled with ash during Ash Wednesday services in Paranak, Philippines, on February 26. People disinfect Kham's Masama Shrine in Tehran, Iran, on February 25. A worker in Digu stacks plastic buckets containing medical waste from coronavirus patients on February 24. Paramedics carry a stretcher off an ambulance in Hong Kong on February 23. People attend a professional soccer match in Kobe, Japan, on February 23. To help stop the spread of the novel coronavirus, the soccer club Bissell Kobe told fans not to sing, chant or wave flags in the season opener against Yokohama FC. A team of volunteers disinfects a pedestrian bridge in Bangkok, Thailand. A man rides his bike in Beijing on February 23. Hospital personnel in Kadogno, Italy, carry new beds inside the hospital on February 21. The hospital is hosting some people who have been diagnosed with the novel coronavirus. Doctors look at a CT scan of a lung at a hospital in Xiaogan, China, on February 20. A sales clerk wears a mask as she waits for customers at a hat shop in Beijing on February 18. Small companies that help drive China's economy are worried about how much damage the coronavirus outbreak will cause to business. Buses carrying American passengers arrive at the Haneda Airport in Tokyo on February 17. The passengers were leaving the quarantine Diamond Princess cruise ship to be repatriated to the United States. A medical worker rests at the isolation ward of the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan on February 16. Authorities watch as the Westerdam cruise ship approaches a port in Sinukville, Cambodia, on February 13. Despite having no confirmed cases of coronavirus on board, the Westerdam was refused port by four other Asian countries before being allowed to dock in Cambodia. A worker has his temperature checked on a shuttered commercial street in Beijing on February 12. Beds are made in the Wuhan Sports Center, which has been converted into a temporary hospital. A child rides a scooter past a police officer wearing protective gear outside the Hong Mei House in Hong Kong on February 11. More than 100 people evacuated the housing block after four residents in two different apartments tested positive for the coronavirus. Relatives of quarantine passengers wave at the Diamond Princess cruise ship as it leaves a port in Yokohama, Japan, to dump wastewater and generate potable water. Dozens of people on the ship were infected with coronavirus. The Dean Wade branch of the County Oak Medical Center is closed amid coronavirus fears in Brighton, England, on February 11. Several locations in and around Brighton were quarantined after a man linked to several coronavirus cases in the United Kingdom came into contact with health care workers and members of the public. A police officer, left, wears protective gear as he guards a cordon at the Hong Mei House in Hong Kong on February 11. A worker wears a protective suit as he waits to screen people entering an office building in Beijing on February 10. China's workforce is slowly coming back to work after the coronavirus outbreak forced many parts of the country to extend the Lunar New Year holiday by more than a week. Chinese President Xi Jinping has his temperature checked during an appearance in Beijing on February 10. Photojournalists wearing face masks take photos of a bus carrying passengers after they disembarked from the World Dream cruise ship in Hong Kong on February 9. More than 5,300 people were quarantined on two cruise ships off Hong Kong and Japan.
People participating in a Lunar New Year parade in New York City hold signs reading, Wuhan Stay Strong. On February 9. A shopper walks past empty shelves at a grocery store in Hong Kong on February 9. China's Ministry of Commerce encouraged supermarkets and grocery stores to resume operations as the country's voluntary or mandatory quarantines began to take an economic toll. A worker wearing a protective suit uses a machine to disinfect a business establishment in Shanghai, China, on February 9. Workers in protective gear walk near the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Yokohama on February 7. People in Hong Kong attend a vigil February 7 for whistleblower Dr. Li Wenyang. Li, 34, died in Wuhan after contracting the virus while treating a patient. A woman grieves while paying tribute to Li Li's at Li's hospital in Wuhan on February 7. The anthem of the seas cruise ship is seen docked at the Cape Liberty cruise port in Bayonne, New Jersey, on February 7. Passengers were to be screened for coronavirus as a precaution, an official with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention told CNN. A light installation is displayed by striking members of the Hospital Authority Employees Alliance and other activists at the Hospital Authority building in Hong Kong on February 7. Passengers are seen on the deck of the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked at the Yokohama port on February 7. Flight attendants wearing face masks make their way through Don Ewing Airport in Bangkok on February 7. Workers check sterile medical gloves at a latex product manufacturer in Nanjing, China, on February 6. A woman wears a protective mask as she shops in a Beijing market on February 6. This aerial photo shows the Lashenshin Hospital that is being built in Wuhan to handle coronavirus patients. A passenger shows a note from the World Dream cruise ship docked at the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal in Hong Kong on February 5. A mask is seen on a statue in Beijing on February 5. An ambulance stops at a traffic light in front of the Grand Lisboa Hotel in Macau. The virus turned China's gambling mecca into a ghost town. A dog in Beijing wears a makeshift mask constructed from a paper cup. Striking hospital workers in Hong Kong demand the closure of the border with mainland China on February 4. The Diamond Princess cruise ship sits anchored in quarantine off the port of Yokohama on February 4. It arrived a day earlier with passengers feeling ill. A medical worker wearing protective gear waits to take the temperature of people entering Princess Margaret Hospital in Hong Kong on February 4. Medical workers in protective suits help transfer patients to a newly completed field hospital in Wuhan. People wearing protective overalls talk outside a Wuhan hotel housing people in isolation on February 3. A man stands in front of TV screens broadcasting a speech by Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam on February 3. Lam said the city would shut almost all border control points to the mainland. A colleague sprays disinfectant on a doctor in Wuhan on February 3. Commuters in Tokyo walk past an electric board displaying dismal stock prices on February 3, the first business day after the Chinese New Year. Asia's markets recorded their worst day in years as investors finally got a chance to react to the worsening coronavirus outbreak. Medical workers move a coronavirus patient into an isolation ward at the Second People's Hospital in Fiang, China, on February 1. Children wear plastic bottles as makeshift masks while waiting to check into a flight at the Beijing Capital Airport on January 30. Passengers in Hong Kong wear protective masks as they wait to board a train at Lo Wu Station, near the mainland border, on January 30. A volunteer wearing protective clothing disinfects a street in Qingdao, China, on January 29. Nanning residents line up to buy face masks from a medical appliance store on January 29. Lai Ujun, left, a member of a medical team leaving for Wuhan, says goodbye to a loved one in Urumqi, China, on January 28. A charter flight from Wuhan arrives at an airport in Anchorage, Alaska, on January 28. The U.S. government chartered the plane to bring home U.S. citizens and diplomats from the American consulate in Wuhan. South Korean President Moon Jae-in wears a mask to inspect the National Medical Center in Seoul on January 28. Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam, Center, attends a news conference in Hong Kong on January 28. Lam said China will stop individual travelers to Hong Kong while closing some border checkpoints and restricting flights and train services from the mainland. 
workers at an airport in Novosibirsk, Russia, checked the temperatures of passengers who arrived from Beijing on January 28. Alex Azar, the U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, speaks during a news conference about the American public health response. Two residents walk in an empty park in Wuhan on January 27. The city remained on lockdown for a fourth day. A person wears a protective mask, goggles and coat as he stands in a nearly empty street in Beijing on January 26. Medical staff members bring a patient to the Wuhan Red Cross Hospital on January 25. People wear protective masks as they walk under Lunar New Year decorations in Beijing on January 25. Construction workers in Wuhan begin to work on a special hospital to deal with the outbreak on January 24. Dr. Alison Arwady, Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health, speaks to reporters on January 24 about a patient in Chicago who had been diagnosed with the coronavirus. The patient was the second in the United States to be diagnosed with the illness. A couple kisses goodbye as they travel for the Lunar New Year holiday in Beijing on January 24. Workers manufacture protective face masks at a factory in China's Hubei province on January 23. Shoppers wear masks in a Wuhan market on January 23. Passengers are checked by a thermography device at an airport in Osaka, Japan, on January 23. People wear masks while shopping for vegetables in Wuhan on January 23. A militia member checks the body temperature of a driver in Wuhan on January 23. Passengers wear masks as they arrive at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila, Philippines, on January 23. A customer holds boxes of particulate respirators at a pharmacy in Hong Kong on January 23. Passengers wear masks at the high-speed train station in Hong Kong on January 23. A woman rides an electric bicycle in Wuhan on January 22. People in Guangzhou, China, wear protective masks on January 22. People go through a checkpoint in Guangzhou on January 22. Medical staff of Wuhan's Union Hospital attend a gathering on January 22. Health officials hold a news conference in Beijing on January 22. Click subscribe to receive the latest news.